In Tibetan Buddhist art, either devotional or votive images are mounted, usually on cloth, and displayed in that way in either devotional spaces or in the home. And that's essentially what a tanka is. The tankas that we have in this exhibition are dating between the 14th and the 19th century, but tankas continue to be produced today, and they were produced earlier than that with the introduction of Buddhism into Tibet. I think that this painting is a really clear-cut example of what a tanka is. It is an image of the Shakyamuni Buddha. Shakyamuni Buddha is the Buddha that we generally know as the Buddha. It's a representation of Shakyamuni at this really important moment of his life. And most images of Shakyamuni that we will find throughout the Buddhist world actually show the Buddha at this moment sitting in this earth-touching mudra when he's called the earth as witness to the fact that he had defeated the demon Mara who was trying to distract him and prevent him from becoming enlightened and he has vanquished Mara, and he is at the moment where he's about to become enlightened. This is one of a number um, of eight major incidents that happened in his lifetime that become very important and are often illustrated. Around him, you're also gonna see that there are representations of six stupas, which are basically architectural elements that are uh, constructed on top of the uh, remnants of the deceased, the ashes of the deceased. When the Buddha died, his ashes were divided up and spread in different places, and stupas were built in those places. So these six different stupas represent other major incidents and places where uh, important things happened in the Buddha's life. If we look down to the lower left, we're going to see that we have a representation of the patrons at an altar making offerings. These are the donors who supported the production of, of this painting. And often you will see this on a tanka. They're among the, one of the main things you want to look for. They may very well be people who were connected with the particular monastery uh, that this tanka was made for. This is a 15th century painting and it's being painted at a time where the Gelug school is just becoming stronger and stronger. And there are representations of Gelug lineage teachers here, but also representations of teachers from other lineages as well. So it's a kind of interesting compilation. Flanking his right and his left side are his two main disciples. And again, the composition because of the disciples and because of these other teachers all around, show us that it's a painting that is a means of passing down knowledge of the teachings of the Buddha via his disciples and via all of these other lamas, and ultimately, hopefully, to the person who is venerating the, the image. So these are works that a student can study to, to learn the history of, of their particular lineage, to learn about uh, particular deities, but they also can be and are used as means to, to visualize as one meditates, to provide a kind of map or pathway to help one as one studies and one works their way towards enlightenment.